Hey guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. As you may know, coconut coir is one of my favorite substrates for using in my Boas enclosures. But one of the downsides of coconut coir is that it's kind of expensive and it wasn't available locally. However, I found a locally available, reasonably priced source of coconut coir that I'm gonna share with you guys today. Also, I'm gonna show you some beautiful Boas like this one, so be sure to stay tuned. Coconut coir, of course, is the outer husk of coconut shells, which has been ground down. And I actually did a video going in depth about coconut coir, why I like it, some of the pros and cons, and how to use it. So check that video out if you didn't see it. But as I mentioned in that video, one of the downsides is it wasn't locally available, and it was kind of expensive. So the coconut coir looks like this. So it's got this kind of spongy texture. This coconut coir just has dried out a little bit because I haven't used it in a while, but one of the big advantages is it holds a lot of moisture and it maintains the humidity, which is you know, great for boas that have shedding issues. And so this stuff comes in these compressed blocks. The compressed blocks look like this. And so previously I was using a brand called Pro Coco, and it came in a block just like this. The block was a 10 pound block, and I would order these and they would cost me somewhere around 17 18 dollars a block but then the shipping on top of that would be about you know 12 to 15 dollars a block so it was costing about 30 dollars for one of these blocks including the shipping the block once you reconstitute it with water is enough uh substrate for about four or five of these boa tubs these 40 by 30 inch boa tubs or about four of the four foot uh, reptile cages but because of the price with shipping it was a little expensive uh, so I've been looking around a lot for a source of locally available material and this stuff has so many uses in gardening and horticulture and you know keeping other types of pets I figured it's there's got to be a locally available source of cocoa coir because people just love this stuff but for a long time I couldn't find this stuff locally and I looked at all of the um, garden shops the local garden shops the local big box shops Walmarts targets things like that I went to of course Home Depot and Lowe's in the garden departments I figured they would be sure to have it plus some local uh, garden shops and they nobody carried this stuff um, so it was kind of frustrating but lo and behold I was shopping last week at one of my favorite stores great source for everything I depend on for everyday life from food to clothing to tires to booze and that of course is Costco so Costco now has this mega mulch brand coconut coir and as you can see it's actually a two pack so each of these packages they claim it's 17.6 uh, pounds with two blocks and they claim that it will expand to up to five cubic feet when you know hydrated and so by comparison the pro coco blocks they claim it was 10 pounds per block uh, and each block they claim made about two cubic feet of material so even though the stated weights on this mega mulch is a little bit less this block supposedly weighs around you know eight and a half pounds or so it looks the same size as the pro coco and i didn't actually weigh the pro coco when i had it but they claimed it was 10 pounds but the size looks the same i hydrated one of these blocks it makes about the same amount of material so i would say one of these blocks is pretty much equivalent to one pro coco you know 10 pound block and so you buy the two pack of mega mulch and this two pack sells for $18.99 and I don't have to pay any shipping of course. So you pay, basically you're getting twice as much material for about two thirds of the price of one of the pro cocos with shipping. So it's really a good deal if you're into the coco coir. So I don't know, I assume that this is not a regular item. I assume Costco is just having it in the spring for you know the spring gardening season and it's probably not gonna last long. Um, so I actually bought a few of these. I'm gonna go back and you know hopefully buy some more if it's not all sold out. And of course this is in my local Costco in California. If you live like in say North Dakota, spring hasn't come yet so it might not be available. But it's definitely something to look for at your local Costco if you're into the coca coir because you can save a lot of money uh, and you can you know get the coca coir locally without having to ship it in. But how does it compare to the Pro Coco Coca Coir? 
So I want to show you guys the Pro Coco versus the Mega Mulch and hopefully you get a close-up comparison here so you can see the differences. And I would say overall there's not a huge difference. They're pretty similar materials. They're both uh, quite good as a substrate and bow as they hold humidity really well. But if we look at the Pro Coco here, one of the things you'll notice is that the, five, the uh, chips tend to be a little more elongated, a little more linear, and there's a little bit more fibers. And I should say this is the Pro Coco chips, not the fiber. But even the chips does have quite a bit of fiber. You know, the fiber is good at holding humidity, so it's not a bad thing. Um, but just a difference with the Pro Coco. Also, the chips, as you can see, are, they're a little bit smaller than with the Mega Mulch. And you can see the colors are a little bit different. When I hydrate this stuff, the color changes a little bit. So the color difference is really very minor. But this is the Mega Mulch. And you'll notice that the uh, chips are, tend to be a little bit larger than with the Pro Coco, and they tend to be a little more square or kind of rectangular looking. Um, there's fibers, not quite as much fiber as with the Pro Coco, but a considerable amount of fiber as well. Um, yeah, there were more large chips like this in the Mega Mulch, which I mean, it's fine for boas. Um, but overall, again, it's quite similar material uh, to the Pro Coco. One thing I did notice is that there were a few little pieces of plastic, like these linear shreds of plastic in this stuff, similar to the uh, Pro Coco. You know, as I, unfortunately there's plastics everywhere, so you just have to kind of pick it out if you see any. But you know, great product, definitely very similar to the Pro Coco, the Mega Mulch from Costco. So Mega Mulch is this great solution that cuts the cost of Coco Core substrate in less than half. And so as I mentioned, I'm going to try to pick up more of these. I think it's just a seasonal item. Next time you're at Costco, if you see some and you want to give it a try, let me know how it works for you uh, and you know, let the rest of the channel know. And just a disclaimer, I'm not paid money by Costco. I'm give, just giving you guys this advice from one, for one keeper to another. So now let's look at some beautiful boas. And as you know, a lot of my boas are in breeding trials right now, so I haven't had them out for the camera lately, but hopefully we'll have some beautiful babies a few months down the road to show you. But in the meantime, some really nice sub-adults or animals that aren't not breeding this year. So this is a beautiful Venezuelan true red tail boa. Uh, this one is from the Rio Bravo bloodline, bred by my buddy, Mike Lucchese. Uh This girl was born in 2017, so she's going on five years old now, so approaching maturity. As you can see, the Venezuelan two red tails don't get quite as big as some of the others like the Surinams and Peruvians. Uh, you know, the mother of this animal, when uh, she gave birth, she was about maybe five and a half feet long. The father was actually quite small. He was only about three feet long. Um, and as you can see, beautiful looking animal. They've got kind of a golden color overall. Not quite as yellow as the Peruvian, but this more kind of orangey golden shade. And they've got these really neat kind of symmetrical bow, shape, bow tie shaped saddles. Just a really cool animal. Um, you don't see these Venezuelan two red tails available uh, very much. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of them in the country. I actually do have a breeding trial with some of my other animals this year. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have some baby Venezuelan true red tails this year. Uh, hopefully, I didn't just jinx myself. But uh, really, you know, you can see she's quite calm, great animal to handle. I just can't say enough about these great Venezuelan true red tails. Uh, great type of true red tail that you just don't see very often. Here's another animal I hope to produce this year, which of course is the Hog Island Boa, a great, really popular locality boa from a small island off the coast of Honduras. And so you can see the beautiful colors in this animal. They have this kind of hypomelanistic look with the overall light colors, but they have a lot of pinks and oranges and even some greens and blues. And so this is an animal that I produced in 2019. So a sub-adult animal. She's in my sub-adult rack right now, but I'll probably have to move her up to, you know, an adult size enclosure pretty soon here. And um, this animal is from a cross between a Sears bloodline male from Vin Russo and an unknown bloodline female that I got from Ron Greenberg. And I really like the outcome of this, this pairing. I actually kept uh, two females in the male that I'm growing up right now. But I prefer them to my pure Sears bloodline animals, which I had produced a couple other years. And actually I have those that uh, cross going on this year. 
Uh, I just think that they, they're a little bit darker in color, a little bit more freckled, but um, just overall the, the colors are just more intense and just better contrast between the colors. And I know a lot of people have this idea that they want to keep a bloodline pure and they just basically want to directly inbreed a bloodline generation after generation. But of course, that's really not a good idea for you know inbreeding reasons. And I think you also get better results when you cross two unrelated bloodlines. Of course, you have to make sure they're from the same locality because you don't want to cross, say, an unrelated Colombian boa with an unrelated Hog Island boa. Um, but Anyway, this I really like the results of this pairing, and you know, we'll just have to see. This female might be ready in another couple of years to have a litter of her own. And I'll show you one more sub-adult future breeder here at Brian Boas. This isn't one that I produced, but this is one of my favorite boas, the last type of locality boa I actually added to the collection back in 2020. This is a Barranquilla Columbia boa produced by my buddy Michael Beach at Woodcliffe Herps. And I, as you probably heard me say in my other videos, I just love these branchia boas. They're definitely one of my top few locality boas. They just have so many great advantages. A lot of both the pros of the true red tails as well as the, you know, the common boas. Of course, these are not true red tails, but um, as far as the coloration, I, I don't think you can beat the coloration even when the true red tails. And I just love the looks and the contrast of these animals. And so this female is now, she's going on uh, what two years here. And uh, you can see she's quite a bit bigger than my two year old uh, true red tails. These branchia boas, they just grow faster. Of course, you know, the Colombian boas grow, tend to grow quite a bit faster than the true red tails. Uh, and interestingly, even if you give them the same food schedule. And this female is actually now eating small to medium sized rats, just uh, moved her up to medium rats in the last feeding. And she's also in my sub-adult rack, but she will need her own, you know, adult size enclosure pretty uh, soon here. And I, you know, I managed to get a trio of these animals from Michael, two females and a male, and they each look a little bit different. But I just, this female is just amazing. Just the, uh, how crisp the pattern is and the symmetry of the saddles, as well as the contrast and, you know, the tail. Maybe not quite as bright red as some of my Suriname boas, but I just love this kind of brick red color. Uh, just an amazing looking boa. These animals I also love because they're such a joy to handle. You know, they hold on, but they don't hold on to squeeze the hell out of you like some of my true red tails. Just a great feel in the hand. Um, great pet, you know, I can't say enough good things about these branchia boas. You know, and hopefully a few years down the road, these animals will be ready to breed. And, you know, I'll have some of my own to offer. A great, uh, true, or great locality boa from uh, Branchia Columbia, the Branchia Columbia Boa Imperator, not a true red tail, but in my mind, every bit is good. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Brian Boas. As always, shoot me any questions you may have. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.